USA Warrior Stories is a not-for-profit organization designed to record, archive, and share videos of veterans' stories to help veterans make a connection with one another and to help us all better understand their sacrifices for our freedoms. Obviously, when you're younger, especially being brown, parents would always, you know, doctor, lawyer, this and that. So that's kind of instilled in me. But like, I always want to like kind of serve, you know. In the beginning, I joined as a reservist um, just so I could get a little bit of both, you know, uh, a taste of both. I basically, my best friend at the time joined as a U.S. Navy CB. Um, so I, you know, definitely got intrigued. He joined as a reservist. I was going through some tough times at the at the time in 2008 as well. They had a sign-on bonus, so that was just like the cherry on top, you know? CBs are leading the way when disaster strikes, providing first response recovery and rebuild to locations all over the world. If the Navy needs it done, we can do it. It's difficult, we do it once. The impossible takes a little longer. I joined thinking I'd be a weekend warrior for a few years, but literally within like three months, uh, they said that, you know, the NMCV 21, which was the battalion at the time, would be uh, splitting up in three, uh, Iraq, Kuwait, and Afghanistan. So um, I ended up going to Afghanistan. That, that news was definitely hard to break down to my family. I'm not gonna lie, I was a little afraid too, because our plane just landed, right? And and we got a rocket attack, a mortar attack. So like being a regular civilian, you're like, oh shit, man, I'm, I just landed. I just, I still remember my first feeling and emotion when I landed. I was like, oh shit, I just landed. I hear about this on the news, rocket attack, I'm gonna die right away, like I just landed. But, um, you know, once you make it and then you literally get rocket attack every single day, that's that's a fact. And then, um, after two weeks, you're, you're not even scared. Like in the first two weeks, you run to bunkers and this and that. After the second week, I would take my time, tie my shoelaces. Like I just became numb to it. You know, I, I, you, lo you lose the fear. No, I was still doing majority CB work. You know, our motto is obviously we build, we fight, we kill. I did a lot of patrolling, uh, you know, at the gate, on the base, a lot of times. Most of it was building, uh, poured a lot of concrete, helped build a school. Um, a swa, swa huts is what they call them, you know, build a lot of swa huts. The Navy Seabees are in charge of constructing 18 Southwest Asian huts or swa huts. They're building for the 101st Airborne Division that will be coming to Kandahar Airfield. Uh, a swa hut is a Southwest Asian hut is what they're called. Uh, basically it's a two-story house, it's a stick frame structure. The buildings being constructed will serve as offices, machine shops and housing. And while it will benefit coalition forces now, they will benefit the government of Afghanistan down the road. Yeah, so then they told me I'd be translating as well because I'm actually from Pakistan. Um, so parts of uh, Afghanistan, uh, especially around the border where I was, uh, Spin Baldak and stuff, they speak Pashto, Farsi, and uh, Urdu. So I was translating uh, to some of the people in Urdu as well. So that experience was pretty cool. The main base I was at was CAF, Kandahar Airfield. Um, but we went out to um, a few small, uh, like Camp Wilson, a few FOBs, as they call it, right? Forward Operational Base. So, you know, I've been to Camp Wilson. I've been to um, Spin Baldak was the main one, which is literally right on the borderline of Pakistan. Coalition forces in Spin Baldak, Afghanistan, as with anywhere else in the country, have to battle the elements almost every day in order to accomplish their mission. For one company that was operating out of a tent, the weather was especially troublesome. So the CBs have stepped in and are building them a solid structure to call their home, which will provide many benefits. I always thought like I was like the pretty cool kid, you know, the pretty athletic kid, you know, like I even like only like 2% of people in the military get like the expert ribbon when you shoot, you know for like you're aiming. So I was one of the 2%.
and I've always had like small racist jokes like oh you only got that because Bin Laden is your uncle or like this or that you know I, I took it as a as you know like listen we're a bunch of tough guys you know joking and I joke back and say stuff back and I'll be honest with you even when I saw someone that was Muslim or like uh, you know with the name or something that stood out I'd be like you know you, you still do a double take like oh like you know because there I still feel like that's still one of the ones that are, is still like you know like the, the least I'd, I'd say you know like so if I saw another one with like a Khan or a Muhammad I'd, I'd do like a double take oh, like, oh shit like <laughs> so uh my roommate actually uh passed away Joe Brunson and that actually got to me because um you know we had this workout regimen and then when we separated uh we had this thing like who could bench uh 225 more reps we had in the beginning and then towards the end and then um we you know we talk or whatever like with the internet and then he was actually supposed to come uh pick me up you know but then like i guess he never made it and then that kind of uh really stuck with me and bothered me because like we're we, we became really close you know i guess just talking to locals a lot of them were also confused uh with what why we're there or like they'd ask like hey why are you here some of them tried to be like friends with me and like i guess you could consider it funny in a way because they didn't know any better you know they're just locals they're like hey man we don't know where bin laden is do you know where he is like they'd ask me questions like that you know i guess just just funny stuff that i remember I noticed like a lot of food would go to waste, you know, so I'd get to go boxes and then towards, you know, on my way out, I'd give it to either TCNs or locals and then a few people started following. So I think that was pretty cool, you know, um, so I started doing that every day and then like a few of my friends joined. So people were thankful, grateful. We built some relationships with the locals and TCNs. Five months after I actually also got hurt, you know in Afghanistan. It was just more so uh, during uh, a patrol. I, I kind of just lost my footing, tripped, fell, and I tore my meniscus, you know. So they said, listen, obviously your legs are maybe, you know, not as effective and you're on crutches, but you can still translate. You can still patrol the front gate and this and that. So, uh, you know, it, it didn't get cut short. You know, I still, I still felt like a valuable asset. They made it known over and over again, and I was very appreciated, so I appreciate that. So I was in uh, San Diego, uh, the the base out there. First of all, b even before rehab, they do this uh, a transition. It was like a three, you know, I think they do that for all veterans now. Mm -hmm. um, when you just come back from one of those countries, you know, uh, like, you know, one week for mental health and then another week for this kind of training. So I didn't even get my surgery for like another month since I got back. Then, then I, you know, you go back to the weekend warrior. So Sandy took place, right? So I, I helped with that uh, for a few of the weekends. It was uh, a lot of it was mostly cleanup. Yeah, no, I, I didn't want to leave, man. Um, I didn't want to get discharged. You know, once you join and you build that camaraderie and brotherhood, like. And, you know, you want, you feel like you're giving back, you know. When I came back, I actually missed it for like a good three to five months, you know, being in, in, in Afghanistan and just serving and like, you know, just was, I actually missed it a lot. Um, but it, it was also, you know, uh, a transition where like my parents got a little afraid, to be honest with you. And now that I look back, I kind of lost like, communication skills with social civilians like I, I felt like I didn't know how to like socialize the way I used to or like even like I'm talking to you now and stuff like I would zone out a lot or I just forgot how to talk to normal civilians or like I probably became a lot more serious I didn't joke or laugh as much so it took like a transition period as well to like get back into it for me at least yeah, I've been involved with the Wounded Warrior Project, and I think they're doing a great thing. Uh, they're a great organization. Um, they help uh, transition veterans when they come back from the service. Uh, they have uh, a lot of fun activities where veterans can meet other veterans. 
such as bowling, we've done top golf, we've done family picnic days, and it, it helps me keep engaged with other veterans as well. They actually did a seminar um, on VA home loans, and I bought my first home with the VA home loan, so it helped and assisted with that. Um, I just think it's a great organization. It's crazy. We're definitely in uh, crazy times. I'm just trying to, you know, they, they still have the post out right now. Speaking of Wounded Warriors, um, they're doing a lot of activities on the web, on Zoom, um, such as like whether it's a cooking class, whether it's yoga, whether it's uh, whatever on Zoom. So I'm trying to stay engaged in that. I don't know how to phrase it, but like you see a lot of veterans when they come back, I don't think they possibly, they don't do, they don't transition the right way. Like, unfortunately, like, you know, you'll see veterans, which I, I also, you know, I guess PTSD and stuff, that's normal, but like whether they're homeless or, or, or whatnot or, or go the wrong route, I just feel like there's so many resources out there. You just got to look on the web. I mean, like, listen, let, let's be honest, like, you know, like obviously suicide's a big, you know, like, there's just, there's veteran crisis line, which I've, you know, called before. And there's, there's just a bunch of resources out there that, you know, that we can use, you know.